days when it was five black police officers captured on a video engaging in excessive use of force when they were committing crimes on video that they were terminated, they were arrested, and they were charged. And, and the police chief Davis, and I have respect for her saying this, the police chief said that it was important that the community see us take swift action. They said it was important that we move swiftly towards justice. Well, when Laquan McDonald was killed in Chicago and by white police officers, it's important that the community see swift justice too. When Alter Sterling was killed in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Mitch, it's important that the community see swift justice too. When Stephon Clark was killed in Sacramento, California, it's important that the community see swift justice too. When Eric Gardner was killed in Staten Island, New York, it's important that the community see swift justice too. When Pamela Turner was killed in Houston, Texas, it's important that the community see swift justice too. When E.J. Bradford was killed on Thanksgiving night in Birmingham, Alabama, it's important that the community see swift justice too. When Terrence Crouchett was a black man, Reverend Al, having car trouble in the broad daylight in Tulsa, Oklahoma, walking away with his hands up, and they shot him in the back on video. It was important that the community see swift justice too on that. When Botham Jones eating ice cream in his own apartment, police woman come in, shoot and kill him, say, I thought it was my apartment and said stand self-defense in her position. It was a need to have swift justice too. And so no more, no more can they ever tell us when we have evidence on video of them brutalizing us that it's going to take six years, that it's going to take a month, that it's going to take uh, three years like Laquan McDonald. No, no, no. 20 days. We're going to start counting. We can count to 20. And every time you kill one of us on video, we're going to say the legacy of Tyree Nichols is that we have equal justice swiftly. 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 And so, Reverend Al, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge a sister who also deserves swift justice, and that is Breonna Taylor, who mother Tamika Palmer is here. And many of you may have heard about this coincidence that Breonna Taylor and Tyree Nichols were born on the same day and the same year, June 5th, 1993. So I want to acknowledge Tamika Palmer. And I know you said it brought back so many memories and pain when you found out it was the same birthday. So if you would stand, Tamika Palmer, let us at least acknowledge Breonna Taylor's mother. Thank you. And, and now, Reverend Al, I guess we're going to hear a brief reflections from the family, and this is hard. So, let, let me, as we bring the family, I also want to acknowledge some of our faith leaders and our faith leaders activists that have come all the way. First of all, a man who interprets the intelligentsia of our time, the Socrates of this generation, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson.
the pastor of New Birth Baptist Church of Atlanta, Georgia, Reverend Jamal Bryan is in the house. I'm sorry, Reverend Jamal Harrison Bryan. Reverend John Gray from Greenville, South Carolina. I must acknowledge two members of the board of Nash Action Network, outstanding clergymen, the pastor of Mount Pisgah Baptist Church in Harlem and the head of Impact and a member of the national board. Uh, stand up. I'm trying to see where he's sitting. Okay, there he is, Reverend Johnny. Stand up, Reverend. Johnny Green, Johnny L. Green, and pastor of New Hope Baptist Church in Elizabeth, New Jersey, member of our board, head of Nantech, the Reverend Steffi Bartley. I want to thank our staff and that work with Reverend Turner and his staff. I want to thank uh, all of the staff of our brother, attorney Ben Crump, it's a hardworking staff. Certainly, Reverend DeVest Toon of my staff, yeah. who really worked hard, and uh, Reverend uh, Dr. Well, he ain't a doctor yet. Don't blow his head up. Reverend Stephen Marshall travels with me, and uh, so many Reverend Nelson Rivers of uh, Nan staff that's been on this all week, and then probably the preeminent media expert in the country today, Rachel Nordlinger, who handled all media. And uh, Damon Byam, who's been with me since he was a little boy. So I, I got to say this to everybody so I don't get thrown off the plane tonight. And the family gather. Let me ask you all, as this family stands here, I want to say this publicly, what I've said to the mother and father privately, that we'll be with them when the cameras are gone. We'll be with them when there's no longer a story. The Floyd family and, and uh, mother of Eric Gardner, Gwen Carr, all of them will tell you, it doesn't matter to me how long, I'm, I'm in the family now, I might show up for Christmas, look for my gift under the tree. Because we're wedded in this struggle together. And I want y'all to treat us like family and we want y'all to be like, if you're not gonna stick with it, don't be jumping up in front of the camera for them. I know they done seen more of Tyree's best friends on TV that they didn't even know was his best friend. People hallucinating they knew Tyree. Well, you know something was Tyree and me. No, you just, you just getting a cameo. That is wrong. Let us support this family and stand with this family. Mama wants to build, she wants to build a skating rink in his name. We gonna do that. But we also going to get some justice for mama and for daddy. Tyree was the kind of man would come home and eat lunch with his daddy, his stepdaddy, and they'd have dinner at night. Raising, this was a good man that didn't deserve this. And nobody deserves it, but he especially didn't deserve it. And to give you some of what he was about, we're going to hear from some of the members of his family. We're going to start with Kiana. Kiana's over here. Wait a minute before you speak. I didn't give Kareem. Nobody worked harder than Kareem. Oh. We called Kareem like he was on my payroll. Okay. <laughs> but we love Kareem. We're going to have Kiana and Latoya speak on behalf They're of his, their brother. These are two of the sisters of Tyree. Um, I'm going to take this time to just share some things that you guys may not know about my baby brother. Um, it's very hard to stand here, so bear with me. Um, 
Harry was my baby brother. Um, him and I are 11 years apart. He was so special to me, and he loved me, and I loved him dearly. You know, being the oldest of three boys, I had to watch my brothers take them places that I probably didn't want to take them, watch them at times when I didn't want to watch them. But with Ty, I didn't mind. He never wanted anything but to watch cartoons and a big bowl of cereal. <laughs> so it was pretty easy to watch him. Um, on the night of January 7th, my brother was robbed of his life, his passions, and his talents, but not his light. When my mother called me and said my baby brother was gone, I lost my faith. I cried. I screamed at God, asking how could he let this happen? And then my cries turned to anger, and anger turned to deep sorrow. Um, in a pain I never felt when those monsters murdered my baby brother. It left me completely heartbroken. I see the world showing him love and fighting for his justice. But all I want is my baby brother back. And even in his demise, he was still polite. He asked him to please stop. He was still the polite young man that he always was. He asked him to please stop. And they did it. And that's why my family will never be the same. And I will just always love my baby brother forever. Thank you. The poem I wrote is called I'm just trying to go home. I'm just trying to go home. Is that too much to ask? I didn't break any laws along this path. I've skated across barriers designed to hold me back. I'm just trying to go home where the love is loud and the smiles are warm like the sunsets that come for me in the coldest of my storms. I'm just trying to go home. I hear the sirens. I see the flashing lights. The directions are clear. Black skin go left, blue skin go right. I'm just trying to go home. Mm. Don't I deserve to feel safe? Batons, badges, boots, bright lights against my face. I'm just trying to go home. Does anyone hear the pain in my cry? The struggle in my breath? God replied, come home, my son. Now you can rest. We're going to hear now from his brothers, James uh, Lazare and Jamal Dupree. How you guys doing? So, I didn't plan to speak today, but uh, I was all just sitting here watching everything. My brother was really robbed of his life. You know, uh, my brother didn't live up to the normal black man hype. Uh, basketball player, football player, rapper, none of that, right? 
he set his own path. You know, he made his own light. Um, he's seen the world way different than I've ever seen it before. And when I sit here and look at the screens of the work that my brother has done and from the vigils, from people talking to me about my brother, I learned so much about him. And I don't think people just tell me this or be telling me, but my brother really touched a lot of lives. He was a very solid individual. He was very peaceful. He was very respectful. And again, I've spent a lot of time away from my brother. And I wish that I haven't because I want to know the person that everybody else knows. Mm. You know, and five officers made that happen to where I won't ever be able to do that. So just being here just just sucks. But uh, I'll never forget my brother. I'll never forget my Gemini twin. I love you. And um, to save a spot for me, bro. Um, good evening. My name is James. My god brother is Tyree. Um, it's not too much I could say that hasn't already been said about him from everybody. Um, but I want to share y'all a story how he got his name, though. My mom named him. My, my sister Toya said earlier before, my mom named him which was, um, came from a movie called Silverado, one of the characters in it, and she liked that movie. But she wanted to name me that, but she always kept that name in her back pocket for some reason, I don't know. Then 93 came, and our boy came, and she was like, there you are, Tyree. <laughs> and I used to always joke with him, like, man, you keep messing with me, I'm going to take my name back. And he'd be like, no, you ain't, that's my name. But it was how he said it. Now, you know, he was eight, and he was already knew who he was. Like, I'm Tyree. This is me. You know, and I always remember that about my little dude coming in the house watching me cereal and watching Looney Tunes or something. But um, I just want to thank everybody for being there for us and, you know, and showing love. But it ain't too much I could say that hasn't already been said about my dude. I just miss him, and I love him, and... This shouldn't have never happened, you know? Well, thank y'all. Let me, as I bring the parents, recognize for the parents you talked about a movie that Ron Vaughn liked that I was not supposed to acknowledge him. He just wanted to come down and fly down with me and fly back. But he's here with us and wants to do something around this. Oscar-winning director Spike Lee is in the house. <laughs> He's sitting there with my daughter, so you know she's going to try to be in the next movie. But the... <laughs> Nobody has shown more strength and more dignity than Ron Vaughn Wills. Ron Vaughn Wills and Rodney Wills have borne such pain for us. And uh, they didn't want to speak, but I just think that we need to just hear them say something. This is their son. This is their struggle. And I know they're going to have weak days. Let us be their strength. Let's hear from the parents of Tyree. I'd like to start by saying thank you for everybody's support. Uh, this has been a journey that's not going to end here. It's just the beginning. Amen. Um, we're looking forward to passing some bills. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to getting justice for all the families over there. 
not just ours. This is a continuous fight that we have to fight for. That's right. We have to fight for justice. Yeah. We cannot continue to let these people brutalize our kids. That's right. uh, to have my siblings up here, my wife, and it's very hard for my wife you know, this is her baby son, and it's nothing like your baby boy. Um, when we got the news, it was very, very difficult. It was surrounded by lies, mm -hmm. deceit, yeah. mm -hmm. trying to cover it up. Mm -hmm. But as they say, what's done in the dark will always come to the light. And the light of day is justice for Tyree. Justice for Tyree. Justice for all the families that lost loved ones through brutality of police or anybody. And I can't say enough about how this community, how this nation, and how this world has came together to support my family, to support my wife, and to support me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. First of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out to pay tribute to my son. Tyree was a beautiful person, and for this to happen to him, it's just unimaginable. I, I promise you the only thing that's keeping me going is the fact that I really truly believe my son was sitting here on an assignment yes, from God. Yes, And I guess now his assignment is done, and he's been taken home. Um, I want to thank, yes, yes, yes. I want to thank all the community activists yes. for being there for my family. I want to thank yes. the chief of police for acting swiftly, yes. Yes. the district attorney, the state of Tennessee. I want to thank my lawyers, yes. Mr. Ben Crump. Yes, sir. Yeah. And especially Kareem Ali. <laughs> Where you at? He has been our rock. That's right. That's right. He has been our rock. Amen. Some good I just need whatever that George Floyd bill we needed passed. Yeah. yeah. We need to take some action. Because there should be no other child that should suffer the way my son and all the other parents here have lost their children. We need to get that bill passed. Amen. And because if we don't, that blood, the next child that dies, that blood is going to be on their hands. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Hello. Give a hand to family. Give a hand to the family.
we are going to stay with them. We're going to do the processional before we do. We're going to have two minute words of comfort. It's one minute verse, one minute, because the family has to move out. And uh, y'all know I do a show called Politics Nation. But if y'all go over a minute, I'm going to do the gong show in here today. Words of comfort. We already did the eulogy and the call to action. So let's act orderly so we can move the family forward as they request. Let me bring Reverend Dr. Earl Fisher of Abyssinian Baptist Church, followed by Reverend Rodney Woodley and Reverend uh, uh, Bishop Marvin Thomas of the First Episcopal District and then Bishop Brandon Porter, Secretary of the General Board of the Church of God in Christ. Won't y'all come in that order quickly? One, one, y'all come together. This way we one right after another. As we, and we seriously, I know some of the family have to catch planes. We need to be expeditious. We're grateful for your presence. protocol has been established to this family. When I say say his name, say Tyree. Say his name. Tyree. Say his name. Tyree. That's some Africana ways of knowing. Our elders and ancestors would say as long as you say someone's name, they shall never die. It's not too much I could add other than this to this family. We will see him again. I was at first African in Savannah, Georgia, doing a workshop. I was in the administrative assistance office and I realized I needed something to project my presentation. So I ran the Best Buy, I had the associate pastor take me and we took longer than they had expected but I had left my book bag in the administrative assistance office. When I got back she said, I thought you'd never come back. I said, did you look around? And she said, no. I said, had you looked around intently, you would have saw I left something. And that signified that at some point you would see me again. I know he's in the hands of God. I know he's in the ancestral realm, but look around intently. He's left something. He's left a child. He's left brothers and sisters. He's left a mother and a father. He's left activists and organizers and community members. And I believe every time we raise our voice for love and justice and power, we will see Tyree again. May the family find comfort in these words. I'd just like to say to my friends, Rodney and Ravon and their entire family that we are soldiers and we're in this army. We're fighting a fight that seems oftentimes unwinnable. But what I got as I sat here and listened was on that day of January 7th, Tyree got drafted unknowingly into a service as a secret agent he was drafted as a secret agent for a secret mission that he had no idea that he had been drafted for but just like any soldier before they go off to war or to do battle they want to go and do something that they love so he went away to take some pictures but on his way home the battle was already afoot so understand this that just because it looks like he lost the battle, the war will be won. Because I heard this statement, and I'll keep it clear. Wars come and go, but soldiers are eternal. God bless you. Langston Hughes' poem, I Too Sing America. 
I want to lift from that poem these two words, I too, with the permission to say we too. So on behalf of the First Episcopal District of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, the Senior Bishop of the CME Church, Bishop Lawrence L. Reddick III, members of the College of Bishops, and all the members of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, on that behalf I come to join this family and all who have seen this unfortunate syndication of the, of the rerun of this movie too often the senseless murder, the murder of one of our sons at the hands of the police. To say we too are grieving with you. We too are sick and tired of being sick and tired of these kinds of funerals. We too remain restless and will be restless until justice is served for Tyree and his family. We too join the voices of others calling for the termination and persecution of the first of the police officers and the first responders who stood by and did nothing as Tyree's life was being taken. We too use our collective voices at every level of government declaring now is the time to pass meaningful police reform legislation that give our mothers and fathers some degree of comfort and peace as their sons leave home that they have that they may return home. We too our fathers and mothers whose hearts are hurting because of your needless pain. We too stand with you, and we too are committed to remaining on the battlefield until justice run down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. We too join you in finding hope and comfort in these words from the hymn writer. His purposes will ripen fast, unfolding every hour. The bud may have a bitter taste, but sweet will be the flower. God bless you and God keep you. Greetings to you and thank you for allowing us this space. And certainly to Madam Vice President, Dr. Sharpton, and Attorney Crump and this host pastor. You've been incredible. To this family, and especially to this mother and father who's calmed the beast in America, thank you so very much. There's a passage of scripture that says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, forgive my voice, I've gotten over COVID, but I'm good. <laughs> in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Here's what you must know. Mother Wells, you said something incredible, that there's a reason for your son's death. I've never seen a tree eat its own fruit. In other words, your gift must be for somebody else. And you're the tree that bore this amazing fruit. We've all been touched by the truth of Tyree's life. Going through life, you know, there's a word that's mystery, then there's another word called Mr. Run. One is to have truth hidden like we've had during this episode. But then another is Mr. Run to have truth revealed. The four gospels, you know, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then they're the the synoptic gospels because they're similar. It's kind of like this. There were some body cameras that malfunctioned, but there was another camera called the Sky Cop that caught the view. In other words, when one witness at a scene doesn't see everything because one witness saw it was a Chevy, the next witness says that uh, I saw the license plate. The next witness says, I didn't see what kind of car it was or the license plate, but I saw an accident. I don't care what you summarize, we still saw brutality. We saw an offense, and that is something that has been revealed. I want to encourage you to know that even suffering has a point to it. Jesus had a crown of thorns, but guess what? A thorn has a point to it. Mother, you're right. There is a reason for this. And as the old folks say, we'll understand it better by and by. Justice for Tyree. Justice for Tyree. One final moment, point of privilege that Al Sharpton has given me. I represent the Church of God in Christ, our presiding bishop. Thank you for coming to Mason Temple. It was epic. Our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, who could not be here, he's in Detroit, but Bishop Aladell Thomas Jr., uh, who came all the way from Houston just to be here, one of our leading bishops in Kojic, is going to read a statement from he and his wife, Lady Karen Clark Sheard. Will you hear this statement? And we've only had 45 seconds apiece. Amen. Blessings to you. 
God bless you. I love you. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which dieth in the Lord. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. I, along with my wife, Karen Clark, shared, and the entire Church of God in Christ, are saddened to learn of the loss of your son, Mr. Tyree Nichols. We offer you and your family our deepest and most sincere condolences. As the days and weeks pass, may you feel the comfort and love of family and friends. May your memories give you peace and the prayers around those, those around, of those around you through these difficult times. The Lord promised never to leave you. He will always be with you. You have our sincere prayers from the office of the presiding bishop and chief apostle of the Church of God in Christ, the Bishop J. Drew Shear. As we prepare to go down from this place, I need um, us to thank God for um, all of these women and men of God from the city of Memphis, Tennessee, all the pastors from Memphis, Tennessee, who are here today to be in solidarity with this family. Will you please stand to your feet? One, two. Thank you. Let us, let us also thank Reverend Stevenson from the CME Church that have, we've been having the press conferences at his church. Give Reverend Stevenson a hand. Thomas. Kenneth Thomas. Thank you so much. And then I want to ask all the pastors who have flown in from around the country to be here on today. Will you stand quickly? We want to acknowledge you and thank you for your solidarity and your presence on today. Thank you. Please be seated. I want the directors from MJ Edwards to come forward now. And I want everybody to remain in place until the family has recessed from the sanctuary. But at this time, I want to pronounce the committal. In submission to the will of our Heavenly Father who has saw fit to take out of this world the soul of Tyree Nichols, we therefore commit his remains to the ground earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Looking forward to the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus, who at the cry of command and the last trump shall descend from heaven. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet them in the air. And there we shall be with the Lord forevermore. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Will we all stand to our feet with the exception of the family? Reverend Toon, the National Field Director of the National Action Network, is going to give us our benediction. And I really need your compliance to please remain in your place until the family has recessed from this place. As they're removing the flower arrangements. Come on, Dale, sing some real quick.
Say his name. I need y'all to do me one favor. All those who love Tyree and love this family, you need to remain in place, please, so they can usher the family out. Um, so we need all of the police remain in place so we can get this family to where they need to be. Is that all right? Are we going to cooperate? Let's pray. God, we say thank you again for just another day's journey. For you're giving all of us something that none of us earn nor deserve. Somehow you look beyond our faults and yet supply our needs. Now God, as we leave this place, but never from thine presence. Give us traveling mercy. Some going north, some headed south, some going east, some going west. Give us travel and mercy as when we get to our final destination, we find that all is well. Those who believe, say amen. Those who believe, say amen again. Say amen one more time. Please remain in place so we can escort the family out. Please remain in place.
Well, this concludes the funeral service for Tyree Nichols at Mississippi Boulevard Christian Church. Just over two hours, mm -hmm. almost two and a half hours About service, and, and it was it was pretty amazing. You give the uh, list of speakers that we heard from, of course, presiding over the whole ceremony, the Reverend Al Sharpton. Uh, we heard from Benjamin Crump, and then some very powerful words by uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. And mm -hmm. by the time you got to Tyree's mom. You could feel her pain, you could feel her frustration, but you could also hear her when she said this is a call for justice for her son, that his death will not, of course, be in vain right now. We heard from faith leaders today. We heard from Tyree's siblings, mm -hmm. two sisters and two brothers as well. Um, again, this is a homegoing service for this young man. And as Reverend Al Sharpton said as well, that he talked about the five officers involved in this, the five African-American officers that were fired. Something that I thought was so interesting that he said, it was 55 years ago, he made it very clear that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. came to Memphis to fight for the sanitation workers, but also to fight for equality when it came to African-Americans. He said those five officers involved in Tyree's death, who were violent, who were brutal, he says this is exactly what MLK Jr. was fighting for. This is what he sacrificed his life for. And this is what makes it so painful. But again, this is a call for justice, a call for reform as we continue to move forward. But half a century later, we're still talking about so many of the same issues. And uh, in, in summary to me, mm -hmm. one of the points that was brought up from the very beginning was that there was a point to Tyree Nichols' life. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was brought to a, a very fine point and a very well-rounded closure by the Reverend Earl Fisher when he said there was a point. 
there was a point to Tyree's life. And I think that that's the important message out of this afternoon. Now we're going to continue to bring you breaking news updates on uh, air and online, of course, about the Tyrese Nichols case. We'll have more coming up on Fox 13 News at 5. We'll see you soon.